السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته everyone wherever you are whenever you are I hope that COVID is not treating you badly I know that we have been suffering over the last year from this uh, negative effect and impact of COVID-19 on all of us restricting our movement and locking us in our us down in our houses cannot move freely and restricting our life and the hope that you are safe and well and keeping well whenever you are wherever you are in this universe please uh, join me today on the zoom and the zoom link is there on the page because there's a lot of drawing and a lot of images actually in this talk this is my third lecture about geometric lines in building civil society. I started about three weeks ago, and this is the final in the three lectures that I'm delivering. I have to thank my colleague uh, Ali Shawa and Mehmet Yusuf of preparing the uh, media production for me of this uh, lecture, inshallah. And in this lecture, uh, if we can change the slide. In this lecture, we'll be, we'll be talking, please join the Zoom. Please join the Zoom, join the Zoom. In this lecture, we'll talk about three parts or three uh, components. One is the introduction. The second, the four parts or the four components of the lecture is itself, which is I make them on a pyramidal uh, structure each pyramid goes to the other pyramid which is from the shock pyramid to the pyramid of postulates and taking things for granted and uh, the social and political awareness pyramid and moving to the top pyramid which is the integrated society the pyramid of integrated society then after that we we'll talk about conclusion uh, i've received some comments about why you keep three lecture, why you deliver three lecture talk about uh, this difficult uh, uh, difficult uh, subject, which is geometric lines in building civil society. Uh, I'm trying to create a vision for us to understand that everything in life goes according to geometrical engineering. The power of creation of God goes through this equation and this geometrical engineering system that Allah SWT is putting for us. To answer the question of you young people is to transform the process of society building into a state of completeness. And you want to complete the process of society building or near completion. So we don't give up no matter what. We don't give up no matter what. If it's, we don't go to this, to feel the, 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 the feeling of despair because of Corona, Spanish flu, SARS, wine fever, birds flu, Ebola, as well as other pandemics. We don't give up. We are going to carry on building our civil society or our society. How on earth that the Corona virus will scare us and we are not scared of the creator of humanity and the virus itself okay this is why i'm bringing this third lecture to talk about that our resilience in resisting the culture or the climate of coronavirus negative impact on all of us and we're going to discuss what happened over the last year okay what happened over the last year was a test, a real test from Allah to our capabilities and destinies. To realize and understand the following. Follow the slides on the Zoom link. First of all, the, re the reality of our scholarly knowledge. We claim that we are educated. We claim that we are knowledgeable. So let us, Corona has put us in a test. To, change, to, to, to test or to challenge our scholarly knowledge. As our knowledge suitable 
to meet these challenges or not. The second reality, our Renaissance and civilization. What kind of civilization that we claim that it is the top, it is the top civilization that we have seen since creation of man. Is it really? Is it a fake organization? It's is it material? materialistic or civilization it is, is it is it a moral civilization or not this is the reality of our civilization and community power the reality of our belief corona as i'm sitting in this room locked me inside the room for nearly a year restricting my movement what's my belief it gave me a lot of time to think and rethink and review my belief my belief in myself my belief in my community, my belief in my country, my belief in my history, in my culture, in my Lord, in my religion. Give us this time because we are not going outside our houses. We are not traveling from a town to town, from a village to village, from a city to city, or from country to country, like we used to do in the past. The reality of our strength, are we strong enough? And what do we mean by being strong? And what do you mean by strength? Is strength is the physical power only? Is the people who have the money are strong? Is the strength in, in the armament, in the machinery, in, in, in the guns, and, 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 and this kind of things that are actually manufacturing or what? We have to review what is the manifestation of strength that we are having. The reality of how much, how much, or how such a little microscopic creature Crable, the life of what we call this individual, the erratic, deceiver, and the haunty person. Small microscopic creature stopped us. And we claim sometimes that we are God. We claim sometimes that we are lords. We claim that we are one, the unchallengeable. And this, this little virus, microscopic one, stopped our 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 life functioning properly as it was it used to be before also the reality of the nature of the natural feeling the natural feeling of love the natural feeling of safety the natural feeling of fear the natural feeling of enjoying life it's in a test because when we are looked inside our rooms like you can see the room i'm sitting in now I'm rethinking, what are you thinking and thinking, thinking and what's happened? So let me try to review actually my feeling towards death. Now everybody of us, everyone of us talking about death and life, nothing else. Because you can see our brothers and sisters from different faith background are dying like that. 90 more than 95 million people have been affected or infected by Corona for over a year now. 52, alhamdulillah, million of them cured, which more than 54%. Two million of them died, unfortunately. May Allah bless their souls, wherever they are, and comfort the heart and the soul of their family. But 2.3, 2.4% of the infected people. So the real, corona is a reality. It's not a joke. Whether it's it will follow the conspiracy theory or will follow the other theory. It's a fact. The reality of the nature of the natural feelings inside the heart, mind, and soul of people. And we found examples of that in the fear from death and happiness and joy of enjoying our living, our living life. COVID-19 also teaches us the reality of these facts. Definitely, because we have much time to sit at home and to think and to reflect. The fact that Allah made it very clear for everyone, but we don't see it, we take it for granted. Are we going to be amongst those people who are certain that there is a Lord managing, arranging, directing all the affairs of the living lives inside this universe or not? Are we or not? Are we or not? This is number one. Are we really certain that he is there to help us or not this reality has to be there because for the last year 
we have more time to think and reflect and review our past life and to see how can we go forward surrounded by Corona. We see all these postulates, like the things that we take for granted, the sun, the moon, the stars, the mountains, the rivers, the ocean, uh, the earth, the birds flying, the wind, all these sort of things, the day and the night, all these sort of things. We see it, take it for granted. But we don't realize out of our ignorance, out of our ignorance, we don't realize, okay, the reality of what? Of they themselves are worshiping Allah day and night, continuously, making continuous prayer to Allah according to their nature, a nature that we don't understand, but understood by the creator of them. Of, of them. Even we ignore his existence, and quite often we do not worship him. So this reflection which happened, which actually, which you are thinking about it over the last year is happening to all of us nowadays. Please, young men and women, young people, wake up, please wake up, wake up. Enough is enough. Say that I'm uh, uh, relaxing, uh, shaking out, uh, uh, have no time, uh, and all this kind of lazy, busy things coming from young people. Please wake up, young people. These are some of the postulates that make us aware of the different affairs surrounding of lives around us. The no, knowing our capabilities, can we deal with Corona alone? Can we fight Corona alone? Okay, and our strength. So really, if we talk about our strength, are we strong? And what do we mean by being strong? And what do we mean by the manifestation of being strong? We move from the introduction, which I mentioned, into the four pyramids. The four pyramids, which I'm going to talk about the main structure of my talk today to you. First pyramid from the bottom up, if you can see it on the slide, you can see the step pyramid in Egypt in a place called uh, Saqqara in uh, Giza in Egypt. And you can see my pyramid, which made out of four pyramids, the shock pyramid, the postulate, and uh, taken for granted pyramid, the social and political awareness pyramid, and the integrated society pyramid. Four, one goes to the other. We move from the first to the second, to the third, to the fourth. And this is how Corona took us from the state of shock to the state of building the integrated society. The first pyramid we're talking about, uh, which you can see, uh, I will move the slides, please. First pyramid, it is the shock pyramid or the shock pyramid, the, the shock state of the people who have been affected by Corona. When any one of us being affected by shock he might be comatose or unconscious. So he or she needs some time to wake up. So after the state of shock, the first step in the shock pyramid of COVID-19, as you can see it in the slide, is waking up. Once you wake up at the first stage in going climbing this pyramid, we look around. So from waking up to looking around to see the extent of the damage and destruction of our society. Just look around you and yourself and see what damage has happened to your society. Then to know, if I, waking up, looking, then knowing, to know, oh my God, there's a massive destruction of this area and lesser destruction in this area. Then to start to think. The process of thinking will come after being waking up, looking, and knowing the extent of damage, then thinking what to do. What to do is to go outside to start to realize the actual, the actual, the actual damage or destruction happened to our society. We went from, from through these five stages in the shock pyramid to create a vision. Never take an action without having a vision. 
what will happen to society after taking such action. And once you realize, you make the vision, draw the plan, and take the action. If at the, the first pyramid, we are going to draw or to go through it, after Corona hit us last year, is waking up, knowing, thinking, realizing, having a vision, then act. Don't ever act without thinking, without planning, without realizing, without having a roadmap for yourself. And this is the first pyramid which Corona will take us through the four pyramids that we're going to have. The second pyramid, which is actually on, and on, on the slide here, if you can see it on the Zoom link, what we call it, the pyramid of postulates. What do you mean postulate? Things taken for granted, as I mentioned in the introduction. The sun, the moon, the sky, the rain, the heat of, of summer, of the, of the sun, the cool weather in winter, all these are actually things taken for granted. Inside such a pyramid, we have other postulates taken for granted in our society. Like number one, from the bottom up, it's bottom up, it's all bottom up, bottom up, bottom up, bottom up. First one from the bottom is my family, my wife, my children. And if my children are grown up, I cannot visit them. They cannot visit me because Corona is locking the doors of every house, depriving me and my wife from going to with one other and the bribe being my children come to me. Thing is we used to take for granted, we cannot do it anymore. And we move from the smaller family, which is the husband and the wife and the children, okay, to the bigger family, the extended family. I cannot visit my parent, my grandfather, my grandmother, my cousin, my auntie, my uncle, actually my nephew, my niece, and all those, because Corona is tightening. It is uh, what siege around all of us and looking us in look, look us uh, and looking us inside our dwellings. We cannot get outside. These things for granted is there in the second pyramid. So we have to go through this to realize what we used to enjoy and to take it for granted that we cannot do it anymore. The third one, our friends, we cannot see them. They cannot see us. Cannot meet. Cannot talk. We cannot enjoy, we cannot actually become, become sociable with them. When up, number four, our neighbors, the next door neighbor for me, I cannot say hello, like I used to do before. Because Corona is there to, to deter me, to scare me and scare him or her from talking to one another. The, the, the things taken for granted as well, our, our community, our society. We can't go outside freely like we used to do before. Unfortunately, our country, the same, we cannot travel to enjoy ourselves to go from this village to this village, or from this town to this town, or from this city to this city, or from this district to this district. We can't even go to these areas anymore. We have been losing the things we've been given to us for granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we go from our country to our values. You know what I why I'm talking about that? Because now there are certain individuals and certain institutions and certain government and certain uh, pol politicians are trying to change our values and our culture and our morality. Okay? And bringing dubious, strange values and the culture, unfortunately. And they're forcing this through the media, the state media, which actually bringing something very strange. So now we can see it. What's going on? And this is in this pyramid, we're going to realize what's happening in our society when I was sitting to see things that we used to take for granted, we cannot do it anymore. Our history and our loyalty. History. We used to work like machine in our in our in our work, in our business, in whatever it is with private or public, or whatever it is. But now we have. But, and actually, we don't know what was happening in our society. Now we have to go back to see, is the history being taught to our children is a fact or fiction? Is true or false? It's definitely false. It's definitely false. It's definitely false. Strange. They are teaching us history which does not belong to us, unfortunately. 
אבל עוד לא עלתי. לא עלתי to whom? לא עלתי to my clan? לא עלתי to my group? לא עלתי to my ג'מעה? או לא עלתי to my sect? או לא עלתי to my... to what? I'm loyal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to my country as well and my religion but I still respect every component of my society my freedom not anymore I can't do what I used to do before because I'm imprisoned and I'm locked in my house by a key in the hand of COVID-19 or COVID-20 or COVID-21 because COVID-19 was last year and COVID-20 will be the same because there's a new strain affecting us. My freedom, my dignity. You know, quite often in this kind of uh, uh, dubious leadership running certain states, there's no more bids. You find old people, women and men dying in front of the gates of the hospital because there's no beds treating very badly because Mr. President or Mr. Prime Minister or Mr. whatever you call them are spending the budget or the, or the money of the country on their own security and their own military protection. Safety, security and stability are not safe anymore or not stable anymore, unfortunately, because Corona is tightening its grip around us. Our planning and visualizing our future, we cannot plan. We used last year, the day before last, to plan that in this year, I'm going to visit this country, this visit, we are going to five, six, seven, eight country, going to have my holiday here and there. Cannot plan this anymore. Gone, gone, gone with the wind. And the last and not least, our value of belief. Give us the opportunity to rethink again about the value of our belief the value of our serenity and tranquility. And this is happening when we wake up from the first pyramid of the pyramid of shock of state of Corona to move to the second pyramid, which is the pyramid of the postulates that have that was saying they were taken for granted, but we lost it inside the culture of Corona. So as I mentioned to you before, there are four pyramids. We we'll discuss two pyramids now. The first one was a state of shock which have to take us up to as i put it back again previous slide previous slide previous slide from the waking up state to the looking around knowing thinking realizing making the vision and action to Realizing, can I keep moving the slides myself, please? To the pyramid of postulates take for granted, actually to realize what you take for granted to the third pyramid, which is now the pyramid of social and political awareness. We have to build a system of social and political awareness. And from pyramid one, shock, Pyramid two, things take for granted. Pyramid three is uh, uh, building social and political awareness uh, in the society. And in this pyramid, there's two parts. The first one, the makers of social and political awareness pyramid, the makers, the awareness makers in the society. Let me point them to you, to let us, to make those people responsible for raising the social and political awareness of every citizen in the country. From the bottom up, as you can see, the Inca pyramid, not the Egyptian pyramid, which I saw in the previous slide, and the Inca civilization is an incredible, incredibly magnificent civilization, neck to neck with the, Egypt, the ancient Egyptian civilization in Egypt. Incredible, incredible, incredible. Please read about it and know it in Latin America, in Mexico, and Peru, and other places there. These pyramids of the makers of social and political awareness pyramid will take us, the bottom of it will be the specialized in the social scholars. What do I mean by social scholars? Social scholars and very highly educated, experienced individuals like you who are specialized in a subject. 
affecting the society, like agriculture, like water, like health, like sanitation, like development, like relief, relief like charitable activities, like politics, like uh, constitution, like media. These are mufti, like if we say it in Arabic, mufti, mufti of the social, the, we call them the social jurisprudence. Social jurisprudence. The social jurisprudence for the people who become highly qualified reference point and call them mufti of the social life. And there is theological jurisprudence which have the mufti who is giving the fatwa on the religious and the religion itself. So the bottom line of it is to have those people who are actually the specialized independent national social scholars, the first group of people to raise the awareness, the social and political awareness inside the uh, uh, society. The second which will rise in the Inca pyramid, the independent political scholars, political scholars, our nowadays politicians becomes my God. You have seen quite a few of them, yani unimaginable the level of credibility and dignity, and even the level of them being uh, terrible, terrible, terrible liars, liars and hypocrites. Uh, the independent political scholars and the effective independent political party. The third is an institution going up in the pyramid, the independent civil society organization. A lot of organ uh, countries are fighting and reducing and shrinking the civil liberty space to try to suffocate the civil society organization. And this civil society organization will have to play a great role in raising the social and political awareness of the people in the sec inside the second pyramid, which actually uh, we're discussing it now, the social and political the awareness pyramid. Then the state religion institute, religion institution, independent religious scholars and non-government independent faith building, all those have to be independent. Quite often in these dictatorship countries or dictatorship regime, actually the Mr. President or Mr. King or Mr. Queen or Mr. Prime Minister actually have an iron fist and to cl clamp down uh, uh, the independence of any religious institution, any religious uh, 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 kind of individual, like scholar. The state uh, and independent media, once media becomes falling in the hand of the government, it will never become free. But it's the role to be played by the media, whether it's independent media institution or state institution, media institution, to raise the social and political awareness inside the country, then the universities, and educational, uh, higher educational and technical institutions, they are, they are the, a part of the institution raising the awareness. Then even the school, the secondary school, the primary school, I mean, even the kindergarten, because we have to start from the childhood, even the mother at home, to build this actually social and political awareness pyramid. So these are the makers of social and political awareness inside the society. The second part of it uh, is, number two, is I'm going to talk not about the rest of the institution making, making the shirt, but I'm going to talk about the marginalized, disenfranchised benefiting groups, which quite often politicians ignore them, ignore them, such as the factory workers, the company workers, nobody goes to them, but there are plenty of them have to let them to benefit from the social and political awareness program. Number two, going bottom up, as you can see it through the Inca uh, pyramid, which I can show it to you in the slide. The retired government and non-government officers are sitting at home in hundreds of thousands or millions and who are ignoring the prison have to raise the social and political awareness of those people. The taxi drivers, you know, the taxi drivers are some of the most informed individuals in the country who knows a lot, a lot, a lot about the problem affecting the citizens and even the solution. Because this taxi driver could give 50 or 60 lift to anyone. 
during the day. And they discuss with him or her uh, a, a social problem, political problem, all these sorts of things. Those who have to raise their social awareness and political awareness as well. Tax driver. Workshops, corner shops, grocery shops. And because the workers working in these smaller places, they have actually to raise the social and political awareness of the workers in this area. The housewives as well at home who have to create programs to raise the level of social and political awareness of the housewives at home. And the laborers, the manual workers, the tea maker, the sandwich sweet and vegetable salesmen and women in the market, in the market, they have, because they are voters, they have a vote to choose a government, a vote to choose the president, a vote to choose a prime minister. And we should, we should, we should keep teaching them and raising their social and political awareness as well. Even the thugs and the criminals who, who come to go to them to try to reform them, to reform them again and again and again and win them back, to stop them going back to the, uh, what they have been doing. Even the street children who have to make a program of raising them and stopping them from becoming future thugs and the criminal ringleaders. So in this pyramid of social and political awareness, which is pyramid number three, as you can see it in my slides, we move from the state of shock of the corona to the state of uh, realizing what the things we used to, get for, to, to, to take for granted to the stage of actually acting positively to raise the social and political awareness of the surroundings of the society as a whole. This will take us to uh, the fourth pyramid, which is the pyramid that actually of integrated society. So in spite of the fact, Corona look us inside our house and I am and you should be telling Corona no way to stop us from developing and redeveloping and redeveloping our side and to be doing it and doing it and doing it non-stop. Pyramid number four, which is come back to the Hofu and uh, pyramid in, in Cairo, you can see it on the, in, in the slide, goes from, it's building the integrated society. This eight steps inside this integrated society pyramid. The bottom one is economic integration. Economic integration is extremely important. We want to build the economy of our country. How? Not only by the rich businessmen, because there's formal economy and there's informal economy. The informal economy could, in some time, in some countries, could constitute between 40 to 60 percent of the state economy. This is being built or created by the salesmen in the street, the lollipop saleswoman the tea makers, the sandwich makers, the kiosk people and workers, all of them. Mm -hmm. So we have to give the respect and the credibility to those people who are a part of the informal economy, as well as we give the respect to the people who are multi-billionaires and making the factories and the companies and multinational companies. Because both of them are a part of building the state economy. So the first economic integration, the first integration in this pyramid of integrated society is the economic integration. And after the, each one of them to feel that he or she is a part of building the state economy. Okay. So social integration. Every society is a part of the country. No distinction, no division, no partition. We accept all be a part to show us, to show us and to others the mosaic of the different, of the consistency or composition of our country is made of all these different societies. The loyalty. In, and in the country, yes, I could be from London, or I could be from Birmingham, or I could be from New York, or I could be from Washington, or I could be from Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, or I could be from Mecca or Medina, or Jeddah, or it could be from uh, Tripoli in, in, in Libya, or Tripoli in, in, uh, in uh, Lebanon, or it could be from Baghdad, or Mosul in Iraq, or Cairo, or Alexandria. Yes, that's no problem. But my loyalty 
is to Britain, to USA, to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, to Jordan, to Iraq, not only to my little township, not only to my little village, not only to my little district, not only to my little uh, uh, group, no, to the country itself, the loyalty. So we have to build the, the, the loyalty, the integration of loyalty, and all of us are loyal, while we are loyal to our local community, we are loyal to the country as a whole. Cultural integration, every culture is accepted, is, is acceptable, accepted and acceptable in the country. That's why we can see the different mosaic and different rainbow colors of the different culture inside the site. Moral integration, the moral values, which should not demean the value and the morality of any other group. And also the value and the faith, we should not actually make mockery and jokes about other faith group. No way, no way, no way. Because we are building a society while building integrated society, accepting different faith, different culture, different uh, moral values, uh, different social backgrounds, and different economic background, and others. If we don't do that, we cannot go to the step number eight on the top, which to create the social identity of the country and of the individual. Integrated society, will have a social identity. Integrated society should go through these seven steps, economic integration, social integration, loyalty integration, cultural integration, moral integration, value integration, and faith integration, will build what we call it, what we call it the social identity and the integrated society. These are the four step pyramids in my talk today to complete or to complement what has been discussed over the last two weeks. Slide, please. In conclusion, let me take you back to what has been discussed before. In part one, we discussed how to build our society. I used to call the society like a house, that we are going to live inside it. In part two, we discussed the required services for our human souls inside the society. We also discussed the dangers, dangers of what? And listen to me, please listen, listen to this, okay? Dangers arising from these social media revolutions, which might lead to the destruction of the universe. This is in, a, in part two. And I'm going to say a statement which could be a little bit heavy, but please, please bear with me. There's no knowledge without belief, no capacity, without certainty, and no civilization without morality. No knowledge without belief, no capacity without certainty, and no civilization without morality. But, but, if we talk about it now, we have, what we have lost now, we have lost faith, certainty, and morality. That's why I'm scared of that the more we become technically and scientifically advanced, the more we'll be able to destroy our planets because there's no morality, no faith, and no certainty. Our science and te technology and new discoveries could destroy our lives because we don't have faith or certainty or morality, unfortunately. And part three, which I'm talking about it today, is we are discussing the values of the postulates, which I mentioned before, to you that we take for granted and was provided to us by Allah, by God. And from such granted God-given provisions, we together can lay down the foundation for building the complete and integrated society that we want to live within its communities and its boundaries. It's not clear, I'm saying it again. In this part three, we're discussing the values of postulates, things taken for granted, okay? That was provided to us by God. And from such granted God-given provisions, we together, me and you and others, can lay down the foundation 
for building what the complete and the integrated society that we want to live within its boundaries and the community. Yeah. This message go to the young people. Did you get the message, young people? Yes, did you get the message? If you listen, but this is still time for you and us to build this integrated society where all creations of Allah can live happily together. So please, if you got the message, young people, let us join our hands together to build this integrated society. Slide. We have seen in the past discussions the developmental stages of this social movement. Developmental stages of this social movement within the depth of the human soul, inside our human soul, flowing between or beneath, it is societal path. There's a path taking the society forward. Flowing beneath its societal path and the complicated structures, compounds, and composites that are managing, protecting, and driving their flow in such a path. We have seen the developmental stages of this social movement within the depth of human soul flowing beneath its societal path and its societal path and the complicated structured compounds and composites that are managing, protecting, and driving their flow inside such path. But now, 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 we'll move to the stage of building the integrated distinctive social movement and society after the flow of society inside the societal path, now we are going to build the integrated distinctive social movement and society. People might be mixed up of understanding the difference between integrated and assimilation. The word integrated does not mean assimilation or dissolving, but it means pluralism and distinction. Bl pluralism and distinction. Integration also means that citizens like you and myself, through their different culture, histories, values, and faith, will be able to live together, complementing one another. Towards what? Towards visualizing. Towards visualizing a comprehensive vision. To do what with the vision? To build a society. What to do with the society? A society where its foundation becomes the distinctive, the distinctive integration. Its foundation will become the distinctive integration. And its structure becomes complementary in creating the effective action. What's this effective action will do for us? Sustaining such a society and will bring happiness and joy to humanity. This is another meaning for integration. Integration also means that citizens like you and us, okay, through the different culture, values, and histories will be able to live together, complement one another, and visualizing a comprehensive vision. They have to build this vision. The vision for what? To build a society, a society where its foundation becomes distinctive integration, and this structure becomes complementary in creating the effective action sustaining such society that will bring happiness and joy to humanity. This is the integration, that what I mean by integration. Our feeling and our belief in what do you mean by integration. Another call to the young people again. I keep calling the young people to wake up. Have we been advised young people, that there is still some time for us to build the integrated, distinctive, comprehensive society. There's still some time. Come out. The society that bring and will bring happiness and joy to everyone. Have you been advised, young people? Have you been advised, young people, that there's still some time to build this integrated, distinctive, comprehensive society that will bring happiness and joy to everyone? Slide. 
in my three lectures, in my three tripartite lecture, with you young people, I have started this tripartite, tripartite and three lecture with you young people. By first all, how it started? By doing one line. See, this journey started by doing one line. This journey started by for walking for one step forward. Started by drawing one line to design the parallels that can explain how to write history. That's how it started two weeks ago, two weeks ago. Then such parallel lines drove us from the history, drove us inside the society to draw the societal path, compounds, composites, social blocks, crossing lines, entangling lines, synonymous lines, sequential lines, and symmetrical lines. See, this the more you go through the society, the more you will create a lot of geometrical lines to connect the site together and to provide services for every being inside the site. From such a line to design the parallels that can explain how to write history into the para into uh, uh, into uh, drawing uh, the lines uh, the social the, uh, started by drawing the one line to design the parallels that can explain how to write history, then such parallel lines drove us inside the society to draw the societal path, compounds, uh, composites, uh, social blocks, crossing lines, entangling lines, and synonymous lines, sequential lines, and symmetrical lines. Then this, this movement, we started drawing one line, then we spoke about what? About information technology in the second, in the second, in the second lecture and social media revolutions which might i'm just trying to say it again and again and again to keep warning myself and you which might might lead to the destruction of planet earth uncontrollable uncontrollable technology and social media could lead eventually to the destruction of the planet and all these lines drove us again into the developmental stages of building social pyramid, the social pyramid and integration process. It goes through my talk today to build the social pyramid integration process where we discovered what? Four subsequent, four sequential step pyramids. In today's four pyramids, there are four, four sequential step pyramids inside today's talk, which I talked about it half an hour ago. Now, when we look at these four subsequent, or sorry, sequential step pyramids, by looking closely, and deeply inside these pyramids, the four which I mentioned, the, the shock pyramid, the uh, postulate, the social awareness pyramid, and the pyramid of, of, of uh, integrated society, to build integrated society. We, inside these four pyramids, we found 44, 44 what? Social values, facts, principles, and foundation. You can review this. And you can make it 50 or 60 or 70 values. Or you can make it reduce it to 20 or 30 or 15. It's entirely up to you because we're not talking about heavenly scripture. So let us be aware, young people, that if we step out for the first step, such a step will, such a step will enable us to create, listen to this social bonds that is needed to build the integrated, distinctive, comprehensive society. Just make the first step. Make the first step, please. Make the first step, and it will be a non-stop process of development. Let us be aware, young people, that if we step out 
for the first step, such step will enable us to create social bonds needed to build the integrated, distinctive, comprehensive society. Our journey, I'm saying it clearly to all of us, is not going to be for, an, for hours or for days or for weeks or for months. It's going to be for years, for era of time and for generations. As you can see the images in front of you in this uh, photographs. So coming back to the young people again and again and again and again, please, are you ready to step the first step or to draw the first line inside the journey of building this social movement? Come back to the young people again. Don't sit at home lazy busy. Are you ready? No, 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 bring it back. Are you ready to draw the first line inside the journey? Are you, to, are you ready to step the first step or to draw the first line inside the journey of building this social movement or not? It's a challenge. January 2021, we're putting all these challenges because we are not going to allow COVID to knock us down or to conquer us. Calling again the young people. Please note, wise young men, sorry, wise young people, that every line, every line we draw for our society could become the beginning of a journey that can create the expected social change needed by society. I would say it again to make you more optimistic, to make you more optimistic. Please note. Wise young people, that every line we draw for our society could become the beginning of a journey that can create the expected social change needed by society. Just draw the line, just make the first step. And I make another statement for you, young people. Life, life, it is planets. And galaxies are made made out, made out of consistent groups of coordinated, magnificently organized, geometrically entangling lines inside that sprawling universe. This is for us to realize. Life, its planets, and the galaxies are made out of consistent groups of coordinated, magnificently organized, geometrically entangling lines inside that sprawling universe. And this is a fact, and this is a fact, and this is a fact. Every creation, small or big, young or old, planet or galaxy, sun or moon, human or animal, plant or animate, fluid or stone, desert or ocean, mountains or valleys, insects or birds or other are created by the creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and are functioning according to this marvelously complicated structured system of creation inside every living creature of him. Every creation, small or big, young or old, planet or galaxy, sun or moon, human or animal, plant or inanimate, fluid or stone, desert or ocean, mountains or valleys, insects or birds or others are created by Allah and are functioning according to this marvelously complicated structure system of creation inside every living creature of him, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you can see the galaxies, you can see the the gorilla, and you can see the insects in this view in here. Uh, slide, please. Our society that we are trying to build, because all this is about how to build this integrated society. Our society that we are trying to create together is like the big living structure that we are trying to build a big living structure. 
or planked building. On, but where? On these sprawling ground spaces. On these, inside these temporal times, striking inside the depth of history. In, in these local cultures and philosophy sprouting among the twigs of nations, and all of these are following the same system made by Allah to create every creation of Amr. You can see the different cultures, different mosaics in, this, in these images. Our society that we are trying to build together is like the big living structure, structure that we are trying to build. To build where? On these sprawling ground spaces. These temporal times striking inside the depth of history, these local cultures and philosophy sprouting amongst the twigs of nations, and all of these are following the same system made by him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to create every creation of him. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. If we know, that's actually for you young men and young women, if we know, and for you, everyone, if we know the fact of life's geometry, life's geometry, or the geometry of life, if we know the fact of life's geometry, we will be able to understand that such life is having a magnificent creator organizing the geometries of its construction. If we know, if we know the fact of life's geometry, we will be able to understand that such life is having a magnificent creator organizing the geometry of its construction. And for sure, its planets and galaxies will be following accordingly. The marvelously and magnificent engineering system, which is, which as I believe is crippling whom, crippling whom, listen to this, the intellectual thinking abilities of thinkers and scientific researchers. Challenge, I'll say it again and again and again. If we know the fact of life's geometry, we'll be able to understand that such life is having a magnificent creator organizing the geometries of its construction, the geometries of its construction. And for sure, its planets, and the galaxies will be following accordingly the marvelously and magnificent engineering system, which, as I believe, is crippling the intellectual thinking abilities of thinkers and scientific researchers, like all of you, scientists. And you can see the images of different cultures in front of you. Okay, next, please. My dear respected young people, I put five questions out of, five inquiries out of this. And these inquiries are, are we really strong? Ask yourself, are you strong? Number two, are we ready or are you ready to accept advice? Or are you are hot-headed, don't want anybody to advise you? Number three, are we aware or are you aware what, of what's happening around us. Number four, are you all the time ready to do anything? Number five, are we ready or are you ready to walk the walk, to walk the first step of this journey with us or even alone? Just do this. Strong, advised, aware, ready, and first step. You can see that you are the people who have to do this. To, 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 to realize your strength, to accept advice, to be aware of the surrounding, and to be ready all the time, and to be ready to take the first step. Slide. I have made these inquiries, the five, which I mentioned, which have been mentioned inside my talk. I have made these inquiries, young people, to make us aware 
to make us, my, myself and yourself, aware that there's no randomness in action, no randomness in action, narrow-mindedness in thinking, narrow-mindedness, there's no narrow-mindedness in thinking. There's no regression and limitation in strategic planning. I say it again. There's no randomness in action, narrow-mindedness, no, no, no narrow-mindedness in thinking, no regression and limitation in strategic planning and thinking. But we should be following the gradual cognition when implanting what the milestones of our societal path. Gradual cognition when implanting the milestone of our societal path. Societal paths are found where societies will be flowing between their flanks, as you can see in the image, and shrubberies according to the properly organized, comprehensive, tight, and simple roadmaps that are seen by the far and the near and are following the societal flow to make the expected social changes towards building what? The integrated, distinctive, comprehensively established society. So we went from the lockdown of Corona in pyramid number one, the pyramid of shock, to pyramid number four is to build the integrated society. Societal paths are found where societies will be following between their flanks, such as be uh, for flowing, would, would, would be flowing, not flowing. Societal paths are found where societies will be flowing between their flanks and shrubberies, according to the properly organized, comprehensive, tight, and simple roadmaps that are seen by the far and the near and are following the societal flow to make the expected social change towards building what? The integrated, distinctive, comprehensively established society. Uh, I thank you for your patience, but really I was struggling to translate the Arabic metaphor into the English. That's why it took me all this time to try to find the right, and maybe difficult words to bring it for you. I thank you very much, and I'll see you inshallah next week, most probably talking about Syria and what's happening in Syria nowadays, inshallah, as a catastrophe and crime against humanity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.